Ladies and gentlemen of Hashtag Nation, welcome back once again to another fun-filled episode of two guys talking about the Buffalo Bills that nobody will watch. Uh, no, <laughs> no, no donuts this morning, though. No, no donuts, donuts. No donuts. Yeah, because, it's... I mean, when gas prices are 7 bucks, I'm not driving Paul around for two hours. <laughs> okay, sorry, guys. <laughs> Hashtag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. I'll send him some donuts, but I'm not driving around for seven Listen, hours. only Americans will complain about $4 a gallon yet sit in line at the drive through at Starbucks for a $7 coffee for 30 minutes, right? Only in America. Bless only me. in America. I will not do that. That's ridiculous. Yeah, no, no. Nope, not doing it. But, you know, it, we're, we're actually separate just because of schedules this week. So it's yes. just that we're just separate. That's the reason why we're That's separate. what I told Paul. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, the, the judge informed me that. <laughs> You know, hey Paul, I got to take out a loan to drive this week. Can we just do virtual? <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so, like, like every every episode is sponsored by Mister Rogers Home. Sean Rogers, the top one percent realtor in all of Arizona. If you're thinking of moving out to the Valley of the Sun, Sean is your guy. His description is in the video, as well as our links to iTunes, Spotify, podcasts, which all of these will be going to, as you guys know, as well as our Patreon, seven dollars and sixteen cents to join. So you get behind the scenes stuff. Which what a lot of you caught the behind the scenes tight end episode that we talked about on the Patreon yeah. channel, which involved Mr. OJ Howard. So yeah, and um, yeah, we and we never released that episode. We never released that. That yeah. was that was the yeah. little nugget for you guys. We released it two weeks ago, Paul. Like I know. It's crazy, right? Have fun with OJ Howard. When you told me OJ Howard is a free agent, the thought never even crossed my mind and I stopped <laughs> like dead in my tracks. And when you say Evan Ingram and OJ Howard, I'm like, my twenty eighteen draft just goes. <laughs> what do, are we picking him up are we picking him up okay what all right what 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 <laughs> you mean uh, so gigan gigantic humans that uh that can catch a football where do they grow these guys mario i i don't OJ know howard is an inch taller than the rock and only like 12 pounds lighter where do they where do they grow these people i don't know where they i don't know paul i don't you know there's so few of us in this world that oh, are god okay <laughs> Okay. As Paul likes to say, certain franchises are held together by duct tape and bubble gum. Well, I'm held together by cookies and Doritos. That's 100% true. That's 100% true. I, true. I am near the same dimensions of OJ Howard, but you're not going to confuse us as far as the weight room four, goes. One, he ran a 4-5-1 uh, at the 40. That's you not fair. a 4-5-1 if you started at the 20. I, I couldn't run a 4-5-1 in a car, Paul. You couldn't run 40. No, I couldn't run 40. <laughs> so anyway, let's get to the episode sometime today. A few moments later. Well, we've cut a bunch of episodes, you know, at the end of the season. So, you know, okay, who who played there last year in Buffalo? Who didn't play yeah. there last year? Beasley's been a name on there. I said jokingly on an episode that, you know, when they cut Star, they'll have enough money for this, this, and this. And you started laughing. And we're like, they're not going to cut Star. I'm like, yeah. yeah, they are. So they yeah. get rid of – somebody even told me. They said uh, – they even commented. They said – with Marlo, um, Star, and Mongo all gone, all your favorites, you got to recycle my positions. I'm like, yeah, I got Sierra Neal. I got once Rick Bates comes back, hopefully. There's, there's plenty. There's, there's plenty, plenty to go to around. Me. There's plenty but to go around. We start to talk about the culture in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. And certain things, you know, you talk about Shaq Lawson and Jordan Phillips wanting to come back to Buffalo. Yeah. Beasley and Star, who were, the, you know, you got to think that they had some impact in that locker room. Mm -hmm. um doing what they did Beasley obviously which will signal a change in the offense I believe I mean you you bring in OJ Howard and you get rid of Beasley I think you know Dorsey wants to put his own mark on this offense I don't know if it's going to be a, a derivative yeah. of the EP or what but that being said what could you tell me how does this shift the culture in Buffalo if it does losing two prominent stars that you've had especially Mongo Mongo was defending Allen all the time I mean that mm -hmm. guy was a fighter Right. Um, and then you, you bring in guys that have already been here. What does that say about the culture in Buffalo? It's wild, right? Because if you watch the press conferences of these guys that um, that just recently signed, like Tim Settle is just a, an excite. He wanted Buffalo like Buffalo was the team for him. Right. Yeah. He wanted it. You talk about Jordan Phillips and Jordan Phillips said 
I didn't want to leave. You know, Brandon Bean and I talked about it and I left and it and doing that served its purpose. But this is where I wanted to be the entire time. But yeah. we we weren't going to be able to work it out. So I had to go. And then you look at Shaq Lawson. Shaq Lawson was on the opposite side of that. Shaq wanted to go. He yeah. wanted to go. And I think he quickly realized that the, you know, he spent his first year under Rex. But after that, you know, like this was the 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 house was getting built around him. And I, I don't know if he kind of missed some of the long term messaging that was there. But yeah. Jack wanted to go and then he bounced around. He's like, what was on three teams in the last two seasons? You yeah, know, I think so. Yeah. So uh, the fact that he that he could pick up the phone and be like, hey, can I come back? And like, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> but let me ask you this, Mark. Is this similar? This this, you know, the the retire the the revenge tour that these players are on. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Is this similar to when uh, Bean and McDermott got here and they started bringing in players from Carolina? right that they were familiar with is this yeah. similar because you had a law where these players were gone you're able to establish you know entrenched culture is yeah. are these players returning is that similar to what we saw with them when they first got here i think it speaks it speaks volumes on a bunch of different levels i think they started to see what was being built i think everybody wants to be a part of a winner and you know I would be lying. I mean, these guys may have wanted to come back, but then when Von Miller signs, I think they're like, if you know, who am I to say that? I don't want to <laughs> sign in Buffalo anymore, but this yeah. is what the Buffalo bills do. And this is how the process goes. And this is why probably bean is so, you know, they call him big baller bean and what he does. He signed a bunch of these one or two year deals with these players. Now you gotta remember you said with the Rex, he, you know, Shaq Lawson came in with the Rex deal. He wasn't, you know, usually players that don't come in with when there's a regime change, they usually don't last very long. No. Hughes is Hughes is, is, an, is an anomaly in that. Yeah. You know, they just they just saw the value in Hughes and they remember they Hughes, extended him early Leotis before McKelvin. he could hit. McKelvin was here for like. No, no, he was like, I'm not talking coaches. about this current one, though. Well, no, I'm just saying current. that there's but those are if they're few. There's only a few examples. Oh, yeah. 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 It, it is common that players get cycled out with, with Reed Ferguson. Changes. Yeah. I yeah. mean, Snapflow69 made it through Great. a couple of regimes. Yeah. <laughs> I love his Twitter handle. Um, that being said, you start to talk about, you know, maybe there was he wasn't part of the regime, and you start to see that. But that's what Bean does. Bean's like, listen, we signed to one or two year prove it deals. You proved it. You showed your wares, and or you shopped your wares, and you showed what you the value that you have. We couldn't do it, like you said, we couldn't sign you, but you we gave you the opportunity. We just didn't handcuff you mm -hmm. to this to this uh, organization. If you want to come back, that's fine. You can come back on another one year deal. But I think it speaks a lot to both Bean saying, okay, he's a, he's a, him and his staff are a good evaluator of talent. And they brought the guys in to prove themselves. And then once they prove themselves, they wanted to try to go to greener pastures to get money. But now they want to come back here because they want to be part of an organization that could possibly win a Super Bowl and be a champion. So if right. you if you are a part of an organization that's a champion, we see it all over the NFL. What was the first thing that we said when Emmanuel Sanders signed in Buffalo? Like, hey, he's got a Lombardi. Mm -hmm. He's got that championship ped pedigree. Let's bring him in. Let's bring right. these guys in that have rings. You know, you bring in Von Miller now. You know, it totally shifts the, the culture of what's happening in Buffalo. And I think, okay, Buffalo is a place where, okay, I want to go there. They have a winning culture. I'll sign a one or two year deal to try to prove my wares to the rest of the league. And then I'll go get my, I'll go get my deal. Or if it works out, I'll stay there. You know, Isaiah McKenzie. You know what I mean? You talk about Isaiah, Isaiah McKenzie. So it's interesting, right? Because you just you just mentioned Emmanuel Sanders, and I was super big fan of the Emmanuel Sanders signing yes. back then. Uh, I still think it was the right move, right? Even though it cost mm -hmm. Gabe Davis snaps early in the season, uh, I still think you give your young players the opportunity to compete against. I, I think Emmanuel Sanders is a Hall of Fame, a Hall of Fame level uh wide receiver yes. right if you look at the resume it's it's gonna be hard to keep him out right it's it, it's gonna yeah. be hard to keep him out um so i i think you you want your young players competing against guys like that but do you think von miller signs in buffalo had emmanuel sanders not come first and i ask that because there's oh. not a lot of connections to von miller through the players in buffalo right now that's right. You know, a lot of times these free agent deals, they're about relationships, right? Jordan Phillips comes back and then he's already he's on the phone with Shaq Lawson the minute he's talking about coming back. Right. He's like, <laughs> yeah. listen, we got to We got to refresh that gif. 
you know, we gotta, we gotta go. It's time to go. We gotta refresh the gift. And, um, Oh my God. Do you think, do you think Von Miller happens had Emmanuel Sanders not come to Buffalo? Well, I think there's an argument to be made that there might've been a phone call. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. I yeah. mean, the fact that Emmanuel Sanders goes there and he, he probably touted Josh Allen to him. You know, it was funny too, because we were having discussions with hashtag nation talking about, you know, maybe Allen should go to the pro bowl to try to recruit some guys. Mm-hmm. You know, look at all the guys they brought in. I don't know if any of those guys were at the Pro Bowl, were they? Mm -hmm. Saffold was. Miller wasn't because he was in the Super Bowl. Right. (laughs) You you start looking at somebody, I don't think they were at the Pro Bowl. Right. (laughs) Right. um, I'm sure a phone call may have been made from Sanders to to Mm -hmm. Miller. That could have been one where he's like, listen, man, you you go there and you, you produce. This whole, the whole fan base will love you forever. Right. Like, that's the way that they are up there. Well, I think there was a lot of, you know, concern from the fan base of, well, you can't cut Beasley because there were some strings attached to Beasley, right? Like he was at the center of the NFL COVID, you know, media attention. Uh, So it it could look like a bad thing. Uh, The truth of the matter is that we were talking about just from a financial reason, Beasley was going to be a tough keep, right? Um, He was going to be a tough keep. And you look at Star. And Star sat out a season because of COVID uh, right when he restructured his deal. And he really handcuffed the bills to him a season deeper than they intended, right? Yes. Because Star sat that year out, uh, league approved, right? He sat that year out. Yeah. Uh, that pushed his contract back a, a year. And Buffalo had just restructured him to try and get some space. And then that contract ended up not mattering. And then that contract jumps in the following season. So yeah. it, there were some there were some organizational issues and some noise that these players brought with them. I don't think any of that really plays in here. But I thought when the Bills were going to cut Beasley, like it was going to be it was going to be mayhem around here. But Buffalo waits. Right. They let Cole Beasley miss the front of free agency where wide receivers are getting paid a ridiculous amount of money. And they waited until the wave was big enough from their free agent signings to say, we've released Cole Beasley. Right. Yeah. It was sneaky. And I'm not saying it's I, I'm not saying that it was, you know, um, that that it was malicious. Right. But no. it's how you do these things. Right. Yeah. It's, just, mean... it's, it's the earmarks of a really well run franchise. Like it's cutting Cole Beasley was going to be noisy, but signing Von Miller, that's kind of noisier. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you, right. you, you, you chart, look at the other side of the ball, you know, in, we know why star was signed mm-hmm. in Buffalo. It was one of the first signings that they had. Um, you know, it, it, you, you didn't have uh, Washington yet as your defensive line coach. So, right. You know, McDermott was trying to get his defense in there. What better guy to be in the room than with yeah. Star, former first round pick who's played around Keekley, he's played around, you know, all these, you know, great players that have had a successful defense with McDermott. So you put him in there. That's the, that's what happens. Mm-hmm. So then when you finally bring back Lawson or you bring back Phillips, who know the defense, mm-hmm. you know, and you got Oliver in his third year and you got all these, you, you, you don't really have a use for Star with the amount of playing time that he had. Right. In, in the contract that was going to be, you know, it was going to be yeah. a big d- dead money hit. A lot of people were hoping that it was going to be a post June first cut. It's not because you need some of that money right now. And I understand that. Yeah. But and the that's whole other thing, those post June first cuts, you don't get that money till June first. No, and, no, you don't. Like and, a lot of people are thinking gonna... you, it's post June. So you get that money now for the draft. You don't. Right. You don't. You don't and money. and no. that, and whatever is going to end up happening as far as the money that gets pushed to the following year because of that post June first designation is going to bleed into Allen's contract and when his contract increases in salary cap number. So I get it. Yeah. It was, it was the right move. Yeah. And right I mean, move. we we could talk about how. You know, the Buffalo Bills, maybe all of these signings earmark, they're punting this draft because so much information of their draft is out on the open market Mm -hmm. with a lot of their executives going to other places. They may be punting it. But let me give you a different perspective real quick, Paul, on the whole Beasley thing. Yeah. If Beasley was, let's say, let's say a team contacted the Buffalo Bills and Mm -hmm. said, we don't want to trade for him. But can you hang on to him after that first wave of free agency goes so we can afford him? We don't want to compete with anybody else. Do you think that they would have done that? Do you think the Bills, because it doesn't seem like in the Bills' nature to do that, to hold on to him yeah. after free agency, like, a, like three days into free agency. Do you think it was like, hey, listen, let a lot of the first wave of receivers go down? Um, I actually think it does make sense to hold on to him, uh, not only from a PR perspective, right, as I just mentioned, but yeah, um, think about it, right? You see Christian Kirk getting the money that he gets, Allen Robinson getting the money that he got. 
Mm-hmm. Like you see some of these big Ray Ray McLeod got ten million dollars on this market. Oh, right? stop it! Well, I'm just stop saying, it. <laughs> wouldn't it be wouldn't it be more prudent for a team that's looking for a wide receiver in the free agent market? Probably can't really afford one to say, hey, listen, we'll just toss you a six for Cole because he's six million dollars, right? Yeah, it's cheaper than the free agent market. It is it right. Is. So it yeah. probably was a wise idea for them to hold on to it to see how crazy that wide receiver market was and just see if something came to them. So, yeah, and, and you know, it, it does make did. sense to me. Yeah. And probably because of the COVID um, issue, that could have been a thing. Maybe, you know, it could have been a yeah. thing for some teams. And you know what? There's some teams that, you know, there's some coaches that don't have their programs established yet to enough to take on a guy like that. And maybe mm-hmm. they, you know, maybe, um, maybe so it's very, very interesting to see about the culture in, in Buffalo that I find it very interesting. Yeah. And, you know, I think the highlight and wrap up this episode when talking about Phillips and when talking about loss and coming back, they're coming back to the the literal same defense they last left a couple of a few seasons ago. Right. Yeah. The same defense. And that's what's so crazy is that they left, signed big money deals, some loss and jumped a couple teams and can come back. It's the same coordinator. It's, you know, it's a it's a it's a litany of some different players, but. For the most part, it's the same defense. Well, right? that's how, that's can, how well, you get the opportunity. To you, do don't. you don't. It doesn't don't. happen in the NFL. And it might have been a selling point. It exactly. might have been a selling point. You, well, walk in, yeah, you walk in and you're, you're walking in as a starter, right? Exactly. You a deal and you're walking in as a starter to reestablish your value, go win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you do it? It's no brainer. It's no right. brainer.